this video is for children in Explorers, but if you've come from another group, you're really welcome. I'm May, and we're going to be having a look at the Bible together. So to watch this video, you'll definitely need one of these, and you can open it up onto Joshua chapter 6. And if you want to get involved with some of the activities going on in this video, you could get a ball that will really help you for one of the games. It can be a tennis ball like this, or it could be a bigger sponge ball, or to be honest, it could be anything that your mum or your dad or whoever's looking after you right now says it's okay to throw around. And it would also be great to have a grown-up with you to watch this video together so that you can chat together about some of the questions and to do the activities. You might also want to get a piece of paper and a pen to write down any questions you have, which you could email me or ask um, your mum or your dad about later, or you could use it to make notes or draw a picture. If you haven't got any of those things and you want to get them, why don't you pause the video, you can go and get them and play the video again. Well, why don't I ask God for help as we come to his precious word? Let's pray. Father God, thank you that you are in control of everything. That there isn't anything in this world that you're not in charge of and making happen. And I pray now that as we come to listen to you, you would be in charge of our hearts that you would make them love what we read in the Bible. And I pray it really would change us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I've got a picture to show you. In fact, two pictures. Can you see? Now, I want you to have a little think. Can the girls, the daughters in this picture, do what they're doing by themselves, do you think? And... If they can't, how much do they need their grown-up, their parent, to help them? Why don't you pause the video, if you like, and have a little think? Well, I wonder what you came up with. You probably talked about the fact that these two daughters here, they definitely can't do the activity they're doing by themselves. This little girl can't cross the road by herself. And this little girl, she can't tie her shoelaces by herself yet. And so, they really need their grown-up to help them. This girl really needs her mum to help her cross the road. And she's actually relying on her mum. She's relying on her mum to keep her safe. And that means she's listening to what her mum says. When her mum says stop, she stops. When her mum says look both ways, she looks both ways. When her mum says let's go, she goes. She's completely relying on her mum and listening to what she says. And it's the same with this girl. She can't tie her laces by herself yet. And so she's completely relying on her dad to help her. She's listening to what he says. When he says, loop it under, she loops it under. But to be honest, he's kind of doing it for her, isn't she? And you might be able to think of ways that you rely on your mum or your dad or your big brother or big sister or on other people in your life. You rely on them to help you do something and that means you listen carefully to what they say. Well, that is going to help us as we look at our Bible passage for today. But we need to do a little recap because it's been a couple of weeks since we looked at the book of Joshua. And so to refresh our memories, I've got a little storyboard. Here, can you see, I've got Joshua and God had put him in charge of the people to lead them into the promised land. But do you remember there were enemies in the promised land so God's people would need to become an army. And Joshua would be the one leading them to do that. And so he sent two spies to visit the city of Jericho. Do you remember that? And they met Rahab, who wanted to trust in God and asked for him to save them. And they said, of course, she could come into God's people as long as she kept on helping them. And she helped those spies escape, didn't she? By tying that red cord, that red rope round her window and letting the spies down it. And then after that, we saw that God led his people across the River Jordan. He stopped the waters and he piled them up and led them across. And we know it was God leading them across because he told them to take the Ark of the Covenant across first. And that was like God was leading them across into the Promised Land but they weren't ready to fight yet. Do you remember? God said that they needed to remind themselves that they were different to everybody else. They weren't going to be like the nations around them who worshipped idols. 
they were going to serve the one true living God. And when they reminded themselves that they were different, they began to enjoy God. They were able to celebrate him. Well, now it's time to start fighting. And the first city that they were going to fight was the city of Jericho, that city that the spies visited where Rahab lived. And do you remember when the king and the people of Jericho heard how awesome God was? Do you remember what happened to them? Do you remember what happened to their hearts? That's right, their hearts melted like this ice cream. Their hearts melted. And because they were afraid, in Jericho, they did this. I wonder if you can work out what they did by what I show you now. They bolted up the gates of the city. They locked all the doors. Nobody was allowed in or out. And they probably would have felt quite safe inside Jericho because the walls were so big and thick and strong. And if you were attacking Jericho, you would need some serious equipment to get through those walls. You'd probably need something like the, these um, devices, a tower, a battering ram, some screens, and of course you'd need a huge army with weapons that were trained for war. And what did Israel have? Well, they had, they had swords. Bows and arrows. And they would have had tent pegs. Hmm, not so good, is it? And they would have also had wooden spoons. Hmm, that's not so good, is it? And even if they did somehow manage to get over the walls of Jericho, inside Jericho was that mean king and his very brave and strong army. Well, God said something to Joshua to help him. And now you're going to find out by having a look at the Bible yourselves. So turn to Joshua chapter 6, verse 2. Pause the video and read that together. Joshua chapter 6, verse 2. OK, well done. I've got some questions for you to help you think about what those verses are saying. Pause the video, have a read of them and answer them together. OK, let's answer the questions together. What did God say he had given Joshua? What did God say he had given Joshua? Hopefully you saw that God said he had given Joshua Jericho and the king and the brave army into his hand. Now, this is where you're going to need your ball. So get your ball and I want you to pretend that my hand is the floor or the table. I want you to put the ball on the floor or on the table or on your bed, wherever you are. And I don't want you to touch it. But without touching it, I want you to throw that ball. I want you to throw that ball to somebody with you or just throw it up in the air and catch it, but without touching it. OK, off you go. How did you do? <laughs> Try again if you want. Well, probably, oh, well, I'm definitely <laughs> sure that nobody was able to do that. You can't, without touching the ball, throw it to someone or throw it up in the air. Now, I want you to try it again, but this time I want you to pick up the ball and I want you to put it into your hand. Okay? Now, I want you to try and throw it up in the air or throw it to somebody else to catch. Off you go. And maybe try it again. 
Well done. How did you find it at that time? Well, I'm sure that you found it a hundred times better because the ball was actually in your hand. When it was on the table, you, you couldn't do anything with it. it. You weren't in charge of it. You couldn't make it do what you wanted. But when it was put into your hand, you were in charge of it and you could do with it whatever you wanted. And that's a bit like what God was saying to Joshua. He was saying, look, I'm going to give Jericho and the king and that brave, mean army into your hand. So you can do with them what you want. You'll be able to beat them, Joshua. That's what God was saying. Now, did God say to Joshua that Joshua would definitely beat the army of Jericho because God would maybe teach him some moves like this or give him some equipment like this? Well, I'm sure you could guess no, <laughs> that's not how Joshua would beat the army of Jericho. But the answer to that is in our second question. Shall we have a look at it? Was God saying he was going to give them into Joshua's hand or that he had already given them into Joshua's hand? What had God said? That he was going to give them into his hand or that he already had given them into his hand? Hopefully he saw that God was saying he had already given them into Joshua's hand. That seems a bit confusing, isn't it? Because Joshua hadn't fought them yet. But what God was saying was that he'd already made sure Joshua would win. God was saying he'd already actually won for them. Imagine you were in a football team. OK, a bit like this. Imagine you were in a football team and you entered into a competition. And in the competition, any time you won a game, you would get five points. And all the different teams in the competition would play lots of games. And the team who won the most points won a special trophy and a prize. Now imagine you won so many games that you got to the final and you were playing against another team. And remember, the team with the most points will win the prize, will win the trophy. But imagine that your team had won so many games already that you had 50 points. And the other team only had 40. Now have a think. Imagine in this final that this team scored the most goals, what would happen? Would, would they win the trophy? Well, no, because even if this team scores the most goals in this final game, they'll only get five points, which means they'll have 45 and you'll still have more points than them. You see, you would go into that game knowing you'd already won. You would have already won the trophy before you even played the game. And that's a bit like what Joshua and the army could say to themselves. God was saying, look, guys, I've already won this for you. It's a done deal. You're going to beat them. It's certain. So God's people didn't need to learn any special kung fu moves or have special lightsaber equipment because God had won it for them already. That's what he'd said. So what did they need to do now? Well, all Joshua and the people did needed to do was to rely on God and listen to what he said, because they could be certain that God had won it for them. Well, what did God tell them to do? What did God say to them? Well, God told Joshua and the people that they would need to march. They would need to march. And what he wanted them to do is march in a special way. He told them they would need to march the Ark of the Covenant around the city of Jericho. And they would do that in a special order. So what you would have is you'd have all the army of God, all the people with their weapons, marching first. And then behind them, you would have seven priests 
with seven ram's horns like this and ram's horns was, were used as trumpets back then they would have their trumpets and then the ark of the covenant would follow after and then a group of people at the back like a rear guard and they would march once around the city of Jericho and when they marched the priests would blow their trumpets so what I've got you might have seen this in the te teaser video I've got my cornet that I'm going to play and the Bible says that just like God had told them to Joshua and the rest of God's people marched once around the city of Jericho and the priests blew their trumpets <laughs> And then after they marched, they went back to their camp and that night slept in their tents. But God had said that he didn't just want them to march for one day. He wanted them to march again like that the next day. So that's what they did. Joshua and the rest of the people got up early, they got into their order, they marched round, the priest went They marched around the city and they went back home to sleep. And you know, God had said that even though the priest should blow their trumpets, nobody should be talking. Nobody should be whispering or talking or shouting or muttering. Everybody had to walk around in silence. And God's people had to do it again. They marched around a third time. The police priests blew their trumpets. It's a bit of a tongue twister. The priests blew their trumpets. But everyone else was quiet. They marched around. Then they went back to their camp and slept. And then the next day they got up early. And they marched around the city once again, in silence, and the priests blew their trumpets. <laughs> then they went back home and went to sleep. And then the next day, they got up early. And maybe they were thinking at this point, why are we doing this? This is a bit strange. We're not fighting, we're just walking. But they relied on God, they did what he said. So they walked around again, the priests blew the trumpets, they marched round, they went back home, went to sleep, and then they did it again the next day. They got up early, they marched round the city, the priests blew their trumpets. Then they went back home and slept in their tents that night. And then the next day, they woke up early and they marched round the city of Jericho. But this day was the seventh day and seven is quite a special number in the bible so god told them he didn't want them to march around once he wanted them to march around seven times so on the seventh day joshua and the people of god marched around the city seven times and the seventh time they were marching around the city of jericho joshua cried out to the people Shout, for the Lord has given the city into our hands. So, the priests blew their trumpets. Are you going to join in with me some, with some sounds here? The priests blew their trumpets. And the people shouted, way! And the Bible says the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. God brought the walls crashing down to the floor and God's army were able to leap into the city and fight and beat their enemies. And the Bible says that only Rahab and her family were saved and they burnt the rest of Jericho down to the ground. They didn't need catapults, they didn't need battering rams. God in his awesome power brought Jericho down. Well, maybe you'd have liked to have been there to see that. That would have been quite cool, wouldn't it? But you know, the Bible says that if we're trusting in Jesus, we are like God's people. We are in a battle. We're in a war. 
not against a city like Jericho, but this is us trusting in Jesus. The Bible says we're in a war with Satan, and I've made him a picture of a lion there because sometimes the Bible describes Satan like a lion prowling round, ready to try and stop Christians from trusting in Jesus. We're fighting against all of Satan's demons, his army, and we're fighting against our sin that tries to trick us into turning away from Jesus and not loving him. And these are powerful. They are big and strong. Do you think we're going to be able to beat them on our own? <laughs> no way! No way can any one of us beat them. What do we need? We need God's help, don't we? We need God's help. Only God can beat those enemies for us. And you know what? He already has. God has already beaten the enemies of Satan and his demons and our sin. He beat them before we were even born. He beat them hundreds of years ago. Do you think you can say how God beat those enemies? He beat them by sending his own dear son to die on the cross. And that was so powerful, it beat the enemies of Satan and his demons and of sin. Isn't that wonderful news? You and I could never beat those enemies ourselves, but we don't need to, because Jesus already has. And so all we need to do is, all we need to do is, what do you think? Rely on God and do what he says. That's it. The Bible says that's being faithful, relying on God and doing what he says. Now, do you think relying on God and doing what he says, being faithful, do you think, do you think that's always easy? Well, I definitely don't think it is, because sometimes we can be a bit like, it's a bit like the people of Jericho, uh, sorry, the people of God, marching around Jericho. They probably thought, is this going to work? Or they might have thought, why is God telling us to do this? Or they might have felt a bit afraid, because they could see from the top of the wall all those enemies of theirs. But they did rely on God, and they did do what he said, and it worked out for their good, didn't it? It turned out for their good, and it's the same for us today. We can rely on God by asking Jesus to save us and listen to what he says by reading the Bible. And here are some ways that we can find it a bit hard and it'll be good to think about those things to help us, to encourage us, to, to be faithful, to rely on God and do what he says. Maybe when we, um, in fact, I'm going to get the picture back up here. How can we sometimes feel a bit like the people of God might have felt when they were walking around Jericho? Maybe when we're watching the Sunday school videos or church at home, we think, is this really making a difference? Is this really teaching me about God and making me close to him? Or when we're praying for our non-Christian friends and we're thinking, I don't even see them much anymore. Is praying for them really going to do anything? Is it going to work? Or maybe when we get to see our friends again, or we chat to them online, we don't want to join in with everything that they do. We want to be different. So maybe they're being mean about somebody or they're laughing about God. And we don't join in with them, but it does make us feel left out. And we think, oh, I just feel so silly doing this. And my friends definitely think I'm silly. Well, when we do those things, watch Sunday school from home, pray for our friends, stand out and be different, we can think, is this really going to work? Why has God told me to do this? I feel silly. Well, you can remember the people walking around Jericho. And you can remember, yeah, they trusted God, they relied on him and did what he said, and it worked out for their good. And it's the same for us. We can remember, yes, Jesus has beat my enemies. Of course I can trust him. Of course I can rely on him and do what he says, even if I think, is this working? Of course I can rely on Jesus and do what he says. I'm going to keep trusting in him, reading what he says in the Bible and following him and going his way.
maybe there's a point this week where you'll feel silly being a Christian or you'll think, I wonder why I'm doing this for Jesus. Well, remember, you can rely on him and do what he says because he's already won the battle against your enemies. Shall I pray and ask God for help to do that this week? Let me pray. Father God, thank you so much that Jesus beat the enemies of Satan and of his demons and of sin. And I pray that we really would rely on Jesus this week and do what he says, even when it feels a bit silly, even when we don't understand why things are happening the way they are, even when we wonder, is prayer or listening to you working? Please would we keep being faithful and keep trusting in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, lovely to have you join us, guys. There are some games you could do at home. You could build your own Jericho wall and make your own trumpets and go around it and act out the story. You could play catch again in the park <laughs> and this time remembering when it's in your hand, whoever has the ball in their hand, they're in charge of it. And that reminds us how God put Joshua's enemies into his hand. You could also read Joshua chapter six, especially verse 20, which talks about the walls coming down. Well, we'll see you next week. Um, have a lovely few days and I'll be praying for you. Bye.